Welcome back. Before we get started on the newer material, I'd like to take a moment and point out where we are on the concept map. Now, if you see that, okay, we have covered just about everything on the screen right here, except for a couple of things, right? And hopefully at this point, um, you are able to see the relation between how relationship between the various concepts and how not how having a concrete knowledge of any one can affect your learning of the other. And hopefully at this point you can see all the relationships between the various concepts. Right now, except for three things, I think <clears throat> I'd say that you agree with me that we have covered just about everything. And these are the three concepts that we have yet to cover. And um, so we're going to learn these three concepts, okay? All right, and this is a new template I plan to use for the remainder of the videos. And uh, I created this gradient template to align with the colors of Midway, which is the blue and the, the dark egg, eggish yellow color. So. This does two things. One, it, it aligns with the university colors. And second, it, when I write darker colors on the slider backgrounds, it just pops up and um, makes <coughs> uh, learning much more easier, I hope. So with that said, if you all remember back when I mentioned this scientist's name, Avogadro's number, and if you remember then, I also wrote a number to go with it, okay? Now, this is, <clears throat> if you pick an element, okay, it would contain 6.023 e to the 23 atoms, right? But if you look on the periodic table, we also learned something called atomic mass, right? And this, for the purpose, without going into too much explanation, we're gonna make the assumption that this is same as the molar mass of the substance, and I think I mentioned it, okay? It's, we're gonna treat them as, as it is the same thing. There is a subtle difference, but for now, we're gonna assume that that difference is not gonna to be too much for our understanding of the concept, so we're gonna treat the atomic mass as a molar mass. The reason being, this molar here, what's going to control our learning for the remainder of the session, okay? So that's why I want to bring the new term, which is essentially the same. So for instance, if you pick the element carbon, okay, and its atomic number is six, and atomic mass is 12, and as I said, we're going to treat this 12 as a uh, as a molar mass, okay? And the unit for molar mass, okay? The unit for molar mass is grams over mole, okay? What that is, is for carbon, carbon's molar mass is, 12 grams per mole, okay? This can be written for just about every element on the periodic table, and I'm not gonna quiz you what is the molar mass of carbon, okay? You can get that information directly off the periodic table, so that is, that's not something you have to memorize, okay? With that said, this number right here, I'm gonna get a different color now, as we are getting into a lot of blues. This number right here, okay, relates to another term that we are going to learn. It's called the mole, okay, the mole. Now, like how we have a dozen of bananas, dozen of oranges, dozen of whatever, the dozen is a term that's collectively addresses there are 12 units of something, right, in a basket, right? So 
the basket here is more like the element itself, okay? And how many atoms are there in that basket is defined by mole, right? A mole is a, a term <clears throat> that scientists have to use to keep things universally constant. And unlike the dozen is always, you know, 12, right? There is a subtle difference that you have to understand. I mean, that's a problem with using analogies sometimes is they do fall apart at some point in time, okay? That is, not every element contains the same number of atoms, okay? Because they don't all have the same mass, right? So if you notice here, what I mean by that is there's, Carbon's molar mass is 12 grams per mole, right? That means every mole of carbon, okay, is 12 grams. That's how much a mole of carbon weighs, okay? So, and let's say nitrogen, okay? Nitrogen is Let's get a blue or different color, maybe so black seven. And the atomic mass is 14. I'm rounding off the atomic mass that you probably see on the periodic table. So this is 14 grams per mole, right? That means a mole of nitrogen contains 14 grams. Okay, what does it really what does it really mean, and why do we need to know the mole? Because every concentration that you would learn is written in terms of a mole, not in terms of grams or other units. And so it's important you understand what a mole is. Okay, so that means ideally, if every element weighs one gram for every mole. Okay, if it weighs one gram, okay, for a mole, right, then, then we will have no problem. That means we say every element contains 6.023 10 to the 23 atoms, right? But that's not the case, right? Every element, every mole is not a gram. Every mole is 12 grams, a mole is 14 grams, a mole could be 78 grams. So if you say a mole of carbon, okay, that will contain, so a carbon, a mole of carbon, okay, will not contain the same number of atoms as a mole of nitrogen. We're gonna see that, okay? A mole of carbon does not contain, okay, the same, sorry, the same, number of atoms as a mole of say nitrogen okay and that's important because what did i what did i start off saying when we begin this course is each element contains so many atoms okay and if you know the electronic configuration of one atom, then it photocopies into the entire element. So you have a replica of the same property of one atom is photocopied into the remainder of the other atoms or stored in the other atoms as the same information for that particular element, right? So one mole of carbon does not contain the same number of atoms as a mole of nitrogen. So that's a statement. Now, that's a technical, technical statement. And for some of you, you need something worked out or more visual to understand what does this really mean. Okay, we're gonna come back to this concept one more time just to understand what it means, right? Okay, so let me come back. Okay. So 
I said earlier in my other video, a mole, okay, of carbon is 12 grams. Now, how do I know that? Again, I said it's in the periodic table, the atomic mass. We're going to treat it as the molar mass, and that will be 12 grams. A mole of nitrogen would be 14 grams, right? So, as I said earlier, a mole of carbon may contain a different number of atoms as a mole of nitrogen. All right, because if every element weighed the same, right? Let's say you pick the periodic table and every element had the same atomic mass, then only we can say that every element has the same number of atoms, but that's not the case. We do know that for sure that every element's atomic mass is different and atomic mass is treated as a molar mass here. So every element should have different number of atoms. All right, so how do we go about actually doing this? All right, so let's say, um, let's say we have two grams of, okay, nitrogen, okay? How many atoms are there? I mean, imagine, I don't know if you can just have an element of nitrogen, but again, this is all abstract and we're just purely learning this for, for understanding what it really means, okay? How many atoms are there in two grams of nitrogen? Okay, what I'm trying to get across is because every element weighs differently, right? That's how many moles of a carbon refers to how many moles of nitrogen refers to this is this number right here every element would have slightly different number of atoms right so let's keep this in mind so to actually do the calculation you have to remember that a mole of nitrogen contains 6.023 e to the 23 atoms okay this is a constant okay this is what we mean by the dozen okay just like a dozen is 12, a mole refers to this. But when you actually incorporate it into a particular element, then that number will be different. A mole itself is always going to be 6.023, 10 to the 23 atoms. So that's what I meant by a dozen analogy. Okay, But that's where the analogy stops. You cannot extend it into the actual element because each element weighs different amounts, right? 12 grams, 14 grams, etc. So to do the actual calculation itself, I always start with the given information. Okay, that's two grams of nitrogen. Two grams of nitrogen, right? Now I prefer this method and you're welcome to modify it based on it, but this is where I am gonna start because I think it really helps, okay? You're, you're gonna have to start with the given information always on the far left top corner of this little tic-tac-toe box I'm gonna draw. And typically you can put one underneath it because there will be nothing to put there. So I always put one, you can leave it blank or you don't need to. Now, what do we have to go? This is, I'm making life easy by telling you how to approach to every calculation clinically so you don't have to memorize, you don't have to get confused, nothing is chaotic, things are always gonna be right for you. All right, as I said, you always start with the given information and always put one on the bottom because there is no information available there. Now let me go get a different color. Now what are we going from to what? Okay, we're starting with grams, right? This is the number we're starting with, well, this is the unit we're starting with. And this is the unit we're gonna end with. You may wonder, is atoms a unit? You sure bet, it, it is, it's, it's a unit. So we're gonna go from grams to atoms, right? But something is missing. What is missing? Well, this is grams, and in chemistry or any science or math, you can only cancel out like units. So ultimately what we want is atoms. That's the answer we want, okay? But, 
to do, do there, we have to do some conversion beforehand. Okay. Okay, we have to do some conversion. And what do we have to know? Well, we know that this is a constant, right? So that we need that information. But if you notice, the mole to atoms does not contain a gram. So how are we gonna get rid of the gram? Well, I gave you that information that the molar mass of nitrogen is molar mass of nitrogen is 14 grams over mole, right? 14, when we write it this way, that is same as writing 14 grams over one mole. Pick whichever one you want and stick with it, all right? So what are we really trying to do here? We gotta cancel out the grams first to get to atoms, right? And we know the molar mass is gra molar mass of nitrogen. A single nitrogen is 14 grams per mole, right? So we write the 14 grams on the bottom and the one mole on the top. Why? Because again, like I said, if you have to accomplish your calculation, you have to do a little manipulation, and manipulation could be just canceling out the unit. And how are we going to achieve that? Well. Let me get my pink color here. And if you notice, we can cancel out the grams, right? Let me, let me go get my black. That's the second column of the tic-tac-toe box. Now comes, well, now I'm left with moles. I don't want moles. How do I go from moles to atoms? Well, that's where the conversion comes in. So one mole is, 6.023 10 to the 23 atoms, right? Right, and if any of you would be struggling with the calculator itself, I'll, I'll make a separate video um, on how what, what keys to press on your scientific calculator to make this work, okay? Let's not worry about the actual answer here, okay? From here, it's just a matter of plugging in numbers and get the right answer. Okay, so it's two times 14. Or if you're gonna, when you do the math, you're gonna enter two times 6.023 e to the 23 on your calculator and you divide it by 14 and that'll give you number of atoms. But it's not so much the calculation that is, that is of very, uh, that's of so much importance here. It's, you see that, the transformation, it's clinical. I started with the given information and it always put it in here. And then I determine what is my transition to go from grams to atoms. I have to go through the molar mass conversion. Now, this is what is, is important. Let me Okay, now Here's something I've, I have worked and for, for people to remember and I will probably post a, a file of this um, little you know, charts I created. So let's say you're starting with grams and you're, let's say you're starting with grams, okay? And your ultimate goal is to go to atoms, okay? If this is the destination you wanna go, you start with gram and then you do the molar mass conversion. Molar mass and then you do one mole equals 6.023 e to the 23 atoms. And then you end up, if you follow this sequence, okay, I've essentially summarized what I just said on the previous screen, right? So whenever you're given grams, you have to first use the molar mass conversion. That's your first step. And then the second step would be to use the relationship between moles and atoms, and that's it. You'll be at your final destination. 
So this is where we started. This is where we end. So you don't need to memorize this. I will give this uh, chart to you. And I can challenge you that I can give you that information. Still, some of you won't be able to get the right answer. Technically, they don't give it to you this way. They give it to you as separate things on the appendix of a test. But I will give it to you this way because I've come up with this method and it seemed to be foolproof and it works well. So let's practice, okay? Anything practice is the key, right? So let's say I give you 4.5 grams of CL, okay? And I ask you how many atoms there are. Are there in again I may not be writing the same way every single time so if there is some discrepancy in my writing it's okay so 4.5 grams of CL um, so as I said you always start with the given information in if you want you know you can write as many tic-tac-toe blocks and it really doesn't matter because you're gonna not use all of them. I always write one or two, three, and then just write my equal sign. Now, very important is what are you given? The unit, that's what you focus, not on the element, not on the actual numbers, it's the unit. You're starting with grams, okay? You're starting with grams, and you're gonna go to, um, atoms okay this is really the question how many atoms so we're going we're going going from grams to atoms right so as i said you always write the given information that's the clue it's it's the key to successfully doing this calculation is write the given information and typically there is nothing to put here you can leave it blank or you can just leave one here okay and that's the second piece of information. And that's, that's the first step in, in really setting it up. Now, what do we have to do? We have to go from grams to atoms, right? That's where we want to be, right? So well, what does that mean? What do we have to do? Well, we need atoms. That means we know that we need this conversion is 6.023 e to the 23 atoms right right now you can use the sequence we need we need to go from grams to atoms right that means the first thing we need is the molar mass and we know the molar mass of chlorine is right around 35.5 okay and why do we have to well molar mass of chlorine is 35.5 grams over one mole. Okay, now don't get bogged down if you saw 34.799 or 35.799, it's, it's just right around 35.5 is the molar mass of grams per. So that's 35.5 grams in one mole, but we gotta put the 35.5 on the bottom because we can cancel grams and moles, right? So now we can cancel this out. Now we are left with mole and then we use the conversion factor here. So that is one mole contains, it's basically you have to know which of the two you have to put on the top or bottom based on what you wanna cancel out. So now we can cancel out the moles and then you can do the math which is 4.5 times 6.023 use brackets in chemistry I highly recommend don't just multiply and divide sometimes there could be issues with calculators and so this is what will give you the answer now if you notice what the point I'm trying to make across is let's say you started with 2.5 grams of CL and 1.5 grams of CL Okay, so how about you practice that? Okay, calculate the number of atoms in, in, okay, two grams of 
two grams of uh, phosphorus, two grams of sulfur, and two grams of aluminum. Why don't you do the math using that little chart I gave you, and then in the next video when I start, I will work out the solution for this, and we're, we're gonna move on to the next concept in the line of things that we have to do, okay? So go ahead and work it out, and when I come back and I saw, I would actually solve the problem with the actual numerical value for an answer, but again, that is not so big deal, it's understanding the larger purpose of why we learned this and why we do this. And so go ahead and solve this. You can pause the video here because this is where the video will end. And then in the next video, I will work out the solution for this problem. And, and then I will at that point tell you the larger purpose or actually remind you the larger purpose because I've already told you the larger purpose. If you're not sure what the larger purpose is, stay tuned to hear that answer, all right? Good.